Pope Francis, we hear, will hold an historic meeting with the Russian Orthodox Patriarch Kirill in Cuba next week. It's crucial, this. It's a big thing. It's the first meeting of its kind since Western and Eastern Christianity split in the 11th century, something known as the Great Schism. RT's Daniel Hawkins reports. Meetings between top-level spiritual leaders are not uncommon, but what makes this one unique is, of course, it's the first time that the Pope, uh, the head of the Roman Catholic Church, over a billion followers worldwide, uh, will meet uh, the Patriarch, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, around 150 million followers, the biggest denomination in Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Now, what makes this so important is that it's the first step uh, towards uh, the warming of relations between these two religious groups, which really have some uh, fundamental differences and how they look at theology and uh, biblical matters. And secondly, it signifies perhaps a first step in a more uh, accepting and inclusive atmosphere uh, from these two churches, whereby the Russian Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church uh, can cooperate as equal partners on an equal footi footing uh, on a global level for the first time uh, in hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, the timing of this meeting is also quite salient. We've got a quote here from the foreign policy chief of the Russian Orthodox Church, uh, the Christ of the Saviour Cathedral here behind me, one of the key landmarks of uh, Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Uh, the um, foreign policy chief, the Metropolitan Ilarion, he said that now with the persecution and what he calls the genocide of Christians uh, in the Middle East, in North and Central Africa, as well as other regions, uh, is not the time for internal disputes, for arguments and bickering. Uh, now is the time to put aside differences and show unity uh, in the face of these global challenges. So very much a call for uh, a united front, if you like, uh, from the leadership of the Russian Orthodox Church, especially at a time when the relations between East and West are, uh, to put it mildly, very tense. Uh, this is certainly a, uh, a step forward in these relations, and perhaps we can say uh, the politicians could take a, a leaf out of their spiritual counterparts' books in uh, also showing some global unity. Here. Our correspondent there, so it's going to be an historic meeting. Let's get some thoughts on it from Joshua McElway, Vatican correspondent for the National Catholic Reporter. Yeah, let's get a thought on it from the, from, from the Catholic Church side of it here. Just how important is this meeting for the Pope? Yeah, as your correspondent said, this will be the first time there's a, a meeting between a Pope, a Roman Catholic Pope, and the leader of the Russian Patriarchate. The previous two popes, both John Paul II and Benedict XVI, had really tried to make a meeting like this happen. It's the first time it's going to happen. It also comes before um, the beginning of the Pan-Orthodox Synod in June. It's the first such meeting of all the leaders of the Orthodox churches since really the ninth century. So this is a strong push towards unity on the behalf of both Pope Francis and Patriarch Kirill. What's been the real catalyst? You say previous popes, recent popes have tried to do this. There's been no meeting, as I said, since the 11th century. What's triggered it now? What's brought two sides together? Well, the Vatican today at a briefing, Vatican spokesman Jesuit Father Federico Lombardi said they had been trying more concretely in the past two years under Pope Francis to make something like this happen. Pope Francis himself said last November when he went to visit Turkey, he visited the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, said he had called Patriarch Kirill and told him basically, I'll meet you anytime, any place, just tell me when and I'll be there. Mm. Um, and a lot of what Pope Francis has focused on is the murder of Christians in the Middle East, uh, what he's called kind of the new persecution of Christians, and that this is a time for Christian unity across denominations and for kind of coming together as one Christian faith.